In this video, I will show you how to add Google reCAPTCHA to this contact form using ASP.NET Core and Razor Pages. So I already prepared this contact form. If I click on Submit, we have the validation errors and if we fill the form correctly, we obtain this success message. So first let's take a look at the source code. So here we can see that I created this project that uses Razor Pages. And I already created this Razor page, which is the contact page. So this is the page. If we have an error, then we will display an alert with the error message. But if we have a success message, then we will display another alert of type success, where we will display the success message. Then we have this form that will be submitted using the POST method. So we have the username, we have the email address, the subject, then the message. And this is the submit button. Let's take a look at the code. So here we can see that we have four properties that are bound to the contact form. And we have these two fields to display either the error message or the success message. In the onGet method we have nothing. And in the onPost method we will check if the submitted data is valid or not. So if we have any validation error, we will display this error message. But if the data is valid, then we will display this success message and we will clear the form. Now let's add Google reCAPTCHA to the contact form. So let's go to the browser and here let's type Google reCAPTCHA. Let's go to the first link, then admin console. Let's set the name of this application. Let's select version 3 of Google reCAPTCHA, then let's provide the domain. Then submit. Then we need to save the site key and the secret key. So let's go to our application. Let's go to appsettings.json and let's create a new section. We can call it reCAPTCHA settings. We need the site key, the secret key, and the verification URL. So first, let's set the site key and the secret key. Then later we will set the verification URL. Now let's click on this link. So to use Google reCAPTCHA, we have two options, either the automatic option or the programmatic option. So in this video, I will show you how to use the automatic option. Then in the next video, I will show you how to use the programmatic option. So let's copy the script element. Let's go to the contact page. And let's paste it before the HTML code. Then let's copy this script element. And let's paste it here. Then let's copy the source code of this button. And let's use it instead of our submit button. Let's copy the bootstrap classes. Let's add them here. And let's delete this button. So when we click on this button, we will execute this method, which is this method. So when we execute this method, we will submit the form having this ID. And for the moment, our form does not have any ID. So let's provide this form with an ID. We can give it the ID contact form ID. So let's copy this ID and let's use it here. Then we need to add the site key that we have in appsettings.json. So we need to add this site key to the submit button. So here let's request a service from the service container. So we need to request this service which is of type I configuration. Then let's read the value of the site key. Then let's add the site key to the submit button. So this is the submit button. 
So let's delete the current site key and let's replace it with the name of the variable. So let's add at then site key. Let's run the application. And now we can see that we have Google Recapture. Let's fill the form. And let's check what will be submitted. So we can make a right click, then inspect, then network. And let's submit the form. So let's select the first element. Then let's select the request. So here we can see that we submitted these values to the server. So we have the data of the form and also we have this parameter gRecaptcha response. So now we need to read this token on the server and we need to check if it is valid or not. So let's click on this link. So here we can see that we need to verify the recaptcha token. So we need to read this parameter from the post request. Then we need to send a post request to this URL and we need to include the secret, which is the secret key, and the response, which is the Google recaptcha token. So these two parameters are required and this parameter is optional. So we don't need to send this parameter. Now let's copy this URL. And let's save it in appsettings.json. Then let's create a service that allows us to verify the recaptcha token. So first let's create a new folder. And let's call it services. Then let's create a new class. And let's call it recaptcha service. Then let's create a new method that allows us to check if the token is valid or not. So we can create this method verify recaptcha v3. It is public and static and it returns a boolean. So it requires the token, which is the Google recaptcha token, the secret key and the verification URL. So here we will create a client, which is an HTTP client that allows us to send a request to Google. Then here we can create this variable and we can add two parameters, the response and the secret. Then we need to send a post request to the verification URL. Then we need to check if we have a success response or not. So if we have a success response, then we need to read the response as a string. Then we need to parse this response and we need to read it as a JSON object. Then we need to check if we have the success response or not. So let's take a look at the response of Google. And here we have an example of the response. We can see that it is a JSON object that contains the success key. So here we will read the value of the success key. If it is not null and it is equal to true, then we will return true, which means that the token is valid. Otherwise, we will return false. Now let's use this method to check if the token is valid or not. So let's go to the contact model and we need to read some data from upsettings.json. So let's create the constructor of this class. And let's request a service of type I configuration. Let's save it into a field. Then in the onPost method, we need to check if the recapture token is valid or not. So if the submitted data is valid, then we need to check the token. So first let's read the Google recapture token from the request. And the name of the parameter is G recapture response. Then we need to read the secret key from upsettings.json and we need to read the verification URL from upsettings.json. Then we need to check if the token is valid or not. So we can call the class recaptcha-service.verify-recaptcha-v3. We will provide it with the token, which is the recaptcha token, the secret key and the verification URL. Then we will check if we have a valid token or not. So if the token is not valid, then we can display this error message to the user. Otherwise, we can reset the form and we can display this success message. 
So here we can see that we have this error because we are using await into this function which is not asynchronous. So let's delete void and let's replace it with async task. Let's run the application. Let's fill the form. Then submit. So here we can see that we have this success message which means that the Google recapture token is valid. In this video I explained how we can use Google recapture automatically. Then in the next video I will show you how to use Google recapture programmatically. You can find the video link in the description.